In the last video, we reinstalled all the cooling system and hoses in this car, and I had hoped to put some coolant in the car, test for leaks, and maybe even start the car up. However, before we can do that, we need to repair the threads in this hole here that some previous owner has stripped. You probably won't be able to see that, but these threads are stripped in there, and this video is gonna be all about how to repair stripped threads, the different methods you can use, the pros and cons of each, and what tools you're going to need, etc. The most common way to repair threads is using something called a helicoil, which is a coil of stainless steel wire like this. With a helicoil, the idea is you drill a hole first with a drill, then you tap threads into that hole, then you wind in the helicoil using a special tool here, and then you break off that little tang at the end and that leaves you with threads inside the hole. Helicoil is actually the brand name that was um, previously owned by Stanley Tools of the UK and recently, well I say recently, a few years ago, was bought by a German company called Berlhoff and they own the brand name. So Helicoil and the original Helicoils you'll find are slightly more expensive than these cheap knockoff sets you can get from eBay and Amazon. They pretty much do the same thing. The only thing I would watch is the material of these um, coils here. They're supposed to be stainless steel, which would be corrosion resistant, but the cheaper knockoffs you might find are a lower grade stainless steel than the uh, more expensive original helicoils. The advantage of a helicoil is that the threads that you put in there will be stronger than the original threads. It's a very thin walled solution, i.e. you don't need to cut out much of the surrounding material. Helicoils are relatively cheap and you don't have to drill down very far to insert the helicoil. The advantage of the helicoil solution is that you need specialist equipment such as the right size tap. Um, also, you're going to need some kind of tool to wind that tap, ideally not a spanner or something. You need even pressure when you're winding in a tap and you're going to need a helicoil that actually fits your thread size. For example, the bolt that we're repairing is an M10 1.5 thread. So this is the most common form of repair, and this is how our water pump housing was repaired by the machine shop using helicoils. Another common solution is something called time certs, and these are a hard metal insert a threaded on both on the outside and on the inside and they are self-locking and they come with a ridge here now once again this is not a genuine time cert but they look very similar and the time cert kit comes with a special tool that not just drills and inserts that but also drills a little chamfer to lay this edge flat Time certs are excellent if you need to take bolts in and out, for example, for fixing spark plug threads, time certs are perfect. Once again, the threads that you get from uh, time certs will be considerably stronger than the original threads that would be drilled in aluminium. Um, it might be of interest to know that in the aerospace industry, in the nuclear industry, rather than drilling threads in aluminium, they will drill holes and actually use helicoils or time certs or a similar product for much stronger threads in critical applications like aeroplanes and nuclear power stations, etc. The advantage of time certs is that they are very expensive. The kits are very expensive. $100 or 100 pounds or thereabouts. Once again, you have to get individual kits for the size of the um, hole that you're repairing. The third solution, which is not often discussed, is self-tapping inserts. These here basically screw into the hole that you're trying to fix. The little slots at the end there act as cutters and that just screws in and gives you a permanent strong thread solution. The advantage of a self-tapping insert is you don't need any special tools to get one of these in. You just need the right sized drill to drill the hole. In our particular case, we're using a 13 and a quarter drill. Um, you could just use a 13 drill. A 13 and a quarter drill just makes it slightly easier to screw the time cert in, but it would go in with a 13 drill as to well. To wind it in, you just put the bolt in and turn the bolt and screw it in. And when you take the bolt out, the bolt will come out and the um, threaded insert will stay in there. Now, some people use a little bit of um, Loctite 
red or blue in there to stop the thread coming out. It depends whether you're dealing with something where the bolt is going to be coming in and out frequently. In our particular case, this bolt is just holds on a radiator pipe bracket. And once it's in there, it'll probably be in there for the next 50 years. So we don't have to bother about Loctite or anything like that. It is so often the case that you get what you pay for when it comes to buying tools and fixtures and fittings, etc. If you go along to Amazon and eBay and buy some threaded inserts, you're never quite sure what they're made of. We've got our threaded inserts from this company here, Aku, who make precision high quality stainless steel fittings and you have a choice you can either buy a1 stainless steel or you can buy a2 stainless steel the difference being the corrosion properties and the hardness of the fittings to repair the strip threads on this 280sl cylinder head we're going to be using this a1 threaded these instrument. jobs sound so much easier than they actually are because what we have to do is first of all drill a pilot hole in there and then wind this in. But you can see that there's not an awful lot of space. We're gonna to have to make sure we don't damage the oil stick in any way and probably take off these um, <clears throat> containers here. And we'll have to take off this metal pipe as well. And hopefully that'll give us enough room to get a drill in there. So we're just gonna ascertain how deep that hole is and make sure that it can take the threaded insert. That hole will be absolutely fine. Just about ready to drill this hole now. We've slavered the end of the drill bit in grease to catch any swath. Um, and we've put a little guide on here, just a bit of rubber pipe to allow us to know how far to drill the hole. You could potentially try and center the drill up by having a block and drilling through a block, but we're not going to do that. It's not absolutely critical that the hole is perpendicular and it's normally a deep hole like that will drag the drill bit perpendicular anyway. So we're gonna give it a go and hopefully not mess it up. Cut a nice clean hole in there using a new sharp drill bit and these threaded inserts are actually tapered on the end so in theory all we need to do now is just wind that in so we're just using an old bolt in there 17 mil bolt and we'll wind that in and hopefully the 17 mil bolt will come out afterwards we're gonna um, you could use an impact driver to get that in we're going to do it by hand using a just a standard wrench. Uh, these are supposed to be self-cutting and in theory all we need to do is just wind this all the way in. It's not ideal doing this with a wrench because you're never getting even torque when you do this. This is with a 13 and a quarter drill bit. As I say you could use this with a third drill bit but I think it'd be slightly difficult to wind in and there's a risk you might end up splitting the aluminium. Wouldn't describe that as a perfect job, but it's an awful lot better than it was before. And now we have a nice, clean, solid set of threads for this bolt to go in and we can put the whole thing back together and get some coolant in this car. I'm going to finish this video here. It's amazing how something as small as some strip threads can set you back several days, but we got there in the end. This car is really starting to look nice. Everything has been renewed, powder coated, the fans, all the hose clips, stainless steel, new hoses, all these pipes have been powder coated, repaired where necessary. Everything is starting to come together on this car. In the next video, we're going to be putting some coolant in here and just turning the engine over and seeing if this car runs. We've got our threaded insert for these guys here, Aku. As I mentioned, they are not particularly cheap, but they have a huge selection and that is a relatively quick and easy way to repair uh, strip threads on a Mercedes. We used an Osborne drill bit, 13 and a quarter mil, which we got from eBay via these guys here. Not particularly cheap, but this was delivered in super quick time and obviously it's something you can use time and time again. We were repairing an M10 one and a half pitch thread bolt or strip threads.